globally, all humans aspire to a better life. We hold big dreams in our hearts, whether it's for our families, in business, or the sheer adventure of breaking boundaries to achieve greatness. When the spark of motivation ignites us to go for our big dreams, our high resolve impacts the whole world. Now we are turning the spotlight on this generation of motivators and the power of positivity in hopes to reach every corner of the earth. We feature leaders who are ready to unleash our full potential as individuals, communities, and countries on the biggest stage there is. This is World's Greatest Motivators. Featuring in this episode of World's Greatest Motivators is Sparse Shaw. He is a 17-year-old youth prodigy, singer, songwriter, rapper, and a motivational speaker. Born with a rare bone disorder, Sparsh is considered a youth ambassador for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Sparsh Shaw is a worldwide internet sensation with over 75 million views on social media sites. He has sung the national anthem for sports championships at the Barclay Center, Madison Square Gardens, and other major arenas. He has also appeared on the Today Show and Little Big Shots. Sparsh is a philanthropist and has helped to raise over a million dollars by performing and participating in international fundraisers. As a youth motivator, Sparsh Shaw is a world's greatest motivator. Hi everyone. My name is Lynn Kitchen. I am one of the executive producers of World's Greatest Motivators here with a special program for you. I'm here with my executive producer partners, Julie Jones Hamilton. Hi, Hi everybody. And Hello. yes, David Meltzer is in the Hello. house. Hi, David. Hello. We have a special, special guest tonight, a young motivator phenom and uh, singer and I'm going to introduce him to you but let me just shout out to him right now Sparsh Shaw thank you for being with us thank you so much for having me it's a blessing to be here you know you are you are a favorite of ours for so many reasons um, and tonight we're just so excited to have the opportunity to introduce you to, to a lot of people who've been waiting for this um, so that they can ask you questions because tonight we have the conversations with world's greatest motivators and this is 30 minutes of questions uh, for Sparsh Shaw. As a mindset uh, mastermind, what we are knowing to be true is that it takes a special mastermind. It takes a special mindset to be in this time. Um, and in this time when people have a lots of difficulties to overcome, we have one of the best, best and even better than best people right here, right now to talk with us about what it's like and what it takes to overcome obstacles because Spar Shah is and a master at overcoming obstacles, and you'll hear more about what I mean. Um, Sparsh has been wowing audiences all over the world. We chose Sparsh Shaw specifically because he is a 17-year-old youth motivator who stands up on stage, gets standing motivation, people crying, as well as his singing can also bring you to tears. So tonight we have something very special for each of you. Let's start out by having you all sign in in the chat, if you would. Give us your name and where, you, where you're where uh, you calling in from and start preparing your questions that we'd like to ask that you put in the Q&A. And tonight we'll have 30 minutes of Q uh, questions uh, for Sparsh Shaw, the young motivator that you know it's he's he's a phenom he's a phenom so at the end of this 30 minutes we're going to ask if it's okay if you would love a special bonus um, for those of you who can stay a little later Sparsh is going to sing for you he has mm -hmm. prepared something really special and tonight is the night so if you can if you can wait around 
and after all the questions boy wait you will have a beautiful beautiful experience with Sparsh Shaw so without further ado Julie why don't you tell a little bit more about Sparsh and then start the first question great thank you well I'm so happy to see you Sparsh thank you for being here <laughs> and, and Cass and David Lynn um, you know Sparsh you have endured so many different conditions your whole life surgeries and your situation yet you have really persevered in fact you've done more than that you have you have turned your situation into a beacon of light of hope for others so i'd like to start by asking you a quick question or whatever you would however you'd like to share is what would you say to the one out there who may feel like giving up they just want to give up maybe the situation is too daunting maybe this is all too much what would you say to that one person I would say to that person that first of all if you're ever at a place where you're doubting your worth or you're doubting what your purpose is or who you even are, how important you are. I need you to know that you are more special than you could even possibly imagine. We are literal miracles. The odds of us being born are literally so close to impossible, they're pretty much impossible. And just, I believe that each and every single person in this world has not only been uniquely handmade by God, but also uniquely assigned by God, right? Every single, um, every single handmade vessel of pottery is different, right? And they may all be made out of the same basic model, but they all have their own imperfections, yet they all have their own strengths. And some are made differently than others because they are designed to do different things to serve different functions in the same way i'm i'm special in my own right because i was made differently from other people and so are you miss julie and so are you miss lynn and so are you mr david and so are you everyone in this world because the assignment that god gave each and every one of us is entirely unique so what i would say is you are worth everything and more and I think giving up is honestly, I'm not, I'm not sure how to frame this, but I think the best way of saying it is that doing what we love to do, following our passions and fulfilling that assignment that's been given to us is the very least we can do to be in gratitude and to thank God for the life that we've been given because it's precious. And if it's true that we only live once, then what will life be worth if we don't finish that assignment? It's like Mary Morrissey has said, if the king sends you with one assignment and you do everything else during your life except that one assignment, then when the time comes to be reckoned of what you did, you will have failed. But I truly believe that no thing in life is big enough for you to conquer. Goliath was a 10 foot tall giant, but David had strength. He found courage in the fact that his assignment was unique and nobody else was willing to take him down. But if you stay fearless and you remember that no matter how long and dark the night, the sun will always rise, then no Goliath can stand in your way and block out the sun. No clouds can stop the, the light of God's grace to shine upon you and from you to finish the assignment that you were called to do. That's right. That's very good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We, it's that relentless persistence, continually, as, as, as Mr. David Meltzer says, in pursuit of your happiness, you know, to continue on. So yes. what are some of the things that make you happy? I think, um, Wow, some of the things that make me happy. I think, first of all is, um, first and foremost, I think is whenever I go up on stage, or I'm doing webinars like this, 
or I get to put out some music, I think, I mean, as a musician, being career-centered, one of my main sources of happiness is when people come up to me and they've told me that their lives have changed, that their lives have been transformed. And I do not say this at all to brag. I, I come from a place of deep humility when I say that I've literally been given the, the honor and blessing of being able to change other people's lives. And um, I think the biggest example I can give of that is people have messaged me from countries all around the world saying they've gone through really tough times. They might be, they might have been going through depression or anxiety or an addiction to some of some sort. Or some people have even told me that they've considered suicide and they heard my music and they listened to my message. I have some speeches out there, such as my TED talk, um, which is how I turned impossible into I'm possible and how you can do it too. That is 25 million views on all social media now. Although I digress, my point is that they've seen my music and they've he heard my message and they've literally been inspired to turn their whole life around and start over with a completely new fire that just comes out of the gratitude of this, of getting to live this precious experience that we call life. So well, that's you, one of the biggest things that's a blessing to me. That is indeed. And that is quite uh, magnificent that you're able to speak that to others and that they can hear it. So could you share with the audience and share with, the little, uh, with us a little bit about yourself and your condition and some of the what you've persevered and what you've gone through as well. Yeah, sure. Um, well, my name is Sparsh. I <laughs> am 17. By profession, I, I always start off like this. This is like my roll call kind of like right in the back of my head. But um, I, by profession, I'm a singer, a songwriter, a rapper, and an inspirational speaker. Mm -hmm. And my story starts off... Um, in the ICU of a hospital, uh, I think 20 miles away from where I was born because I came out of my mother's womb bearing almost 40 fractures all throughout my body. Pretty much any muscle, you, I mean, any bone that you name, I, was, uh, I probably broke hands, legs, ribs. The doctors came to my parents who were in the other hospital and told them that your son has osteogenesis imperfecta, which is a rare incurable uh, disorder that makes your bones fragile. It's genetic. It doesn't have a cure yet. Um, and they said your son has two days to live, 48 hours. My mom and dad, they're shocked. They have no idea what to do. But my dad calls his grandfather in India. And one thing that he says really changes his life. And it's simply that uh, my grandfather tells my dad, God gave you sparsh. Uh, son because he knew that you would be the best parents to take care of him from then on my dad never looked back and ever since then uh, my mom and dad found out that I had a passion and a talent uh, for music very early on I started learning Indian classical music when I was six years old and I've been learning now for at least 10 years now um, I started Western vocal uh, music and a little bit of piano for, and I've been doing that for around five years now. I've also been in my middle school, high school choirs. Um, but besides that, I think the only reason I guess I can say that my story is different from other people is that I was given a situation and given a condition in which many other people in other circumstances, many other families might say, what can this kid bring to the world? because he can't walk, he can't move around on his own. He, um, you know, he, he, he's so fragile, he'll break bones very easily. What can he offer to the world? And yet, I've been able to go on 10 countries, more than 150 live performances in front of a total of two, uh, 1 billion people, which happened twice. Um, I've written, as a songwriter, I've written 55 songs. I'll admit only two of them are out, but um, actually that is uh, one of those originals I will definitely be sharing. So of course to everyone who's there, please stay tuned for the end. I don't want you to miss it. Um, as a rapper, I think that's when my big break came in, which well, break, but yeah, that was the first um, significant one is when I 
released a clean cover of Eminem's I'm Not Afraid, or Not Afraid, that gained has now gained at least 75 to 80 million views on all social media. Um, and since then, I think it's just, I think the rest you could say is history. But I think actually it's the present because I'm still living it. And I'm so glad that I'm able to live my dream career, even at this age. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Now, Lynn, or David, do you have anything you'd like to say? Yeah, well, first, I'm always amazed that he's only 17 years old. He's wise beyond your years, Barsh. You know, it's interesting because I'm always interested in the blend between money and faith. And I don't think I've ever met a 17-year-old with more faith than you. And oh, wow. uh, I have learned more lessons about the currency of money, the energy that we put into the flow to get what we want, and have worked really diligently over 52 years to try to figure out that reconciliation of the man-made construct of money and how faith blends with that. So I'd be really curious to see how someone 17 with an old soul and a wise soul would blend money with faith today. Right. That's an amazing question. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because I know that is a very tough line to cross, um, to walk on, I would say. But my dad and my mom always, I give them full credit for this. They always taught me the number one thing about um, earning success. Actually, two things, but they're interrelated. The number one that is most relevant to your question is that money and fame are simply the byproducts of success. The real thing that matters is having the passion and doing what you love to do. Because number one, that's the only way that you can do great work, quote Steve Jobs. And the second thing is, if you love what you do, then, I mean, isn't that kind of the end in itself? That's not really the means to the end. It's, it's, that is the end. And so for me, the end in mind is not necessarily, okay, of course I want to put enough food on the table to feed myself and my children when I have them and, and my family. But of course, I know it's more than that. And the calling that I've been given is to reach out to people um, through their hearts. Like I say, to sparsh or touch their hearts. That's what my name means, touch. So to sparse people's hearts and spirits, um, and as well as, you know, okay, fine. If I make money on the side, that's great. If not, at least I'm still doing what I love to do. And the second thing is, you know, I've never thought of success as an objective. I've thought of it as the journey. Success is the journey, and it's the different objectives that we have, the setups and the setbacks, which are really just setups in disguise, are there to... Um, propel us forward and give us, I think, more of an incentive to continue following our calling. If we think of the object, maybe not as necessarily the end, but as the incentive to keep going on that journey, then that can provide great motivation, especially in times when we know that we're straying from that path. So that's, I think, how I blend money and faith. I think if that, that sort of answers your question. It certainly does. Thank you. Yeah. And we have some questions starting to roll in. Uh, so why don't we get started, Sparsh? Awesome. From your fans. Uh, our, the first question is from Rahul. Dear Sparsh, in this time of COVID-19, many folks are losing their jobs and some have closed, have their clo uh, close ones have, having lost their jobs. What is your recipe for staying positive during these times? Right. I love that question. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I'm still 17. I haven't, um, I mean, definitely music is my full-time career per se, but I'm a student. I still rely on my father and my mother um, financially in that sense. However, um, so I, I mean, I can't really say I know exactly what everyone's going through, but I do know that as Einstein said so well, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. So I think the first thing that we have to do is we have to have a great attitude. Attitude is altitude. And the more positive your altitude, the higher up you'll be able to go. Because trust me, when you're climbing that mountain of success, that journey, it's an infinite summit. But the higher you go, the tougher it'll be. So the more positivity that we have and the more we are, um, the more we realize that everything Every, every set, like I said, every setback is a setup and that we can use those to propel ourselves forward, not push us back. 
then we can um, continue to stay positive during these times. I think the most one very practical suggestion I would give is that we may have lost our jobs due to COVID-19, but that doesn't stop us from that shouldn't stop us from following our passions. And what maybe your job is your passion, and maybe you can find another way to um, uh, exercise that passion or develop that passion. But if not, then start and maybe start investing more time in yourself, in your hobbies, in your passions, and those will bear the fruits in due time. And I personally, I've always believed that everything happens for a reason. So I, I think that not, I think it's more than just this too shall pass. I think with COVID-19, the best response that one can give is that this storm will actually rebuild. We just don't see it yet. We just have to put the pieces together. Oh, that's beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you, Sparsh. And on top of that, um, Prashant asks, should we depend on our luck? Mm, should we depend on our luck? Um, well, personally, um, I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in luck or coincidence at all. In fact, um, I heard a rabbi once say, um, well, a pastor quoted a rabbi who said that there is no coincidence. And what they, what he, what the pastor called it was a God incident. It's never a coincidence. And I personally feel that because not only from personal experience, there's so many events in my life that I just cannot explain as simply luck. But I think that all that, um, all our, um, what do you call it? All the uh, opportunities that we're given in life, they come at such perfect moments that it's literally, I feel like it's unfathomable to, unfathomable to think it's anything else other than blessings. However, um, in terms of what we can do to not only give us, um, not only uh, welcome those opportunities, but to give ourselves our own opportunities. Um, I love, there was this amazing quote on my friend's shirt once that I read. And it said, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. My point is, we cannot rely on coincidence for um, our success for two reasons. Again, number one, there is no coincidence. I firmly believe that. And number two is if we don't put in the work, how will we ever be able to uh, live up to and um, do justice to the opportunities that we're given? So we had to put in the work, right? It's like, it's it's kind of like saying, because um, a lot of times we talk about hard work and I think of farmers, right? Because that's kind of a go-to thing, but it's kind of like saying, um, oh, I'll wait for the sun to shine on my plants. I'll wait for the rains to come, but I won't plant, I won't plant the seeds. I won't pull out the weeds, all that stuff. You got to put in the work, you know? That's right. It's hard. I know it's very that makes hard. Luck. That to. makes the luck, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the harvest. <laughs> yeah. So a question here from Andrea. Sparsh, mm -hmm. can you speak to finding a calling later in life? Thank you Ooh. for being such an inspiration. I love that. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Um, and also thank you to Rahul and Prashant. Um, but uh in answer to your question, I don't think that there's any one uh, time where you have to find a calling. I feel like society has already placed so much pressure as it is on us to find out what we love to do and find our occupations and everything. So if it takes time, it's okay. And I, I speak that especially out of, you know, I'm going, I'm going to be going to college after one more year of high school. And of course, this is the number one question we get asked. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to major in? What do you want to study? Right. But I personally feel like it's OK. Um, when I was young, I wasn't so sure about what I wanted to do. When I was much younger, I wasn't so sure about what I wanted to do either. When um, as a very young child, I loved I love um, paleontology. So I was really interested in prehistoric animals and everything. So people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up is I wanted to be a paleontologist. But as I started realizing um, by giving more performances, by experiencing more as a musician, and then as a motivational speaker later, I was like, wow, music and speaking for me was able to reach out to more people. And it was so much more fulfilling for me and my life than just paleontology. I know I was very young when I did this, but it doesn't matter what age you are in your life. I feel like your calling is 
again, the unique God-given assignment that you have. And the gifts of calling of God are in, in, irrevocable. So, I mean, no matter what time you find it in, as long as you find it and then make the most of it with the time you have to leave this world better than you found it, that's really what matters. Ooh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Uh, David, do you want to just jump in here? I'm so overwhelmed here. Yeah, sure. I'll let you think for a second on a question. I, Sparse, I just want to comment on coincidence because I love your take on it. I, I have a different one, and I'd love for hmm. you to comment on it. I, I believe there is coincidence, and I believe coincidence is a mathematical term. It's when two right. things coincide in a perfect way at a perfect time, uh, which would make it a God incidence in your definition, most likely. But I do think that it's not luck. I, I think there's two components or a mathematical equation of what we pay attention to and give our intention to, uh, which is what we think, say, do believe, and even some aspects of our unconscious competency, our personalities, uh, our God-given quantum being. But if you take your attention and you put your intention into it, the coincidences that you want in your life will occur at the right way at the perfect time. Most people mm -hmm. think that's luck. And so I, I just think that the God incidences are a better equation to the coincidences that I occur, but I do believe in the coinciding of things in a mathematical or technological way uh, that's dependent upon our personal attention and intention. What are your thoughts that, on that? I, I, I definitely can see what you're saying here. I agree with what you're coming from. Um, yeah, coincidence, if anything, I think it's really just a mathematical term in that sense, but I do believe, yeah, you're right. There are always right signs that we never that we never realize are there, and then there's the signs that we pay attention to, that we put our intention into the attention of, right? So I agree that there are definitely certain opportunities that we're given in life that um, we may not notice, and then there are those that we notice. So that I agree, there there's definitely is an art of I guess finding out um, those opportunities and looking for them. I think honestly a great example of this is um my I, I i would just say that in life it's it's better to be a hunter of opportunity than a scavenger of opportunity biggest example i can give is my dad like all of the a lot of the performances that i've done and everything you know with my dad working behind the scenes and everything he's helped to bring those opportunities and i think and I only, I only say that because I know that they have changed my life in such a different course. And so I would just say that, you know, don't just look, wait for the opportunities to come to you. Um, don't be, uh, or even better, don't be a filter feeder. Um, you know, be an active hunter, right? So I think that's what I would say about coincidences find out look for those signs look for those opportunities and put your intention into your attention i love that i mean attention i love that we love you so thank you yeah. <laughs> thank you so casey has a question here um casey casey asked what would be your top five moments throughout your life so far and i maybe we, we maybe want to just choose that squeeze that down to one what do you say what would be your top one favorite moment throughout your life so far also casey says we're so proud of you for everything you've accomplished sparsh thank you miss casey um okay what is the one moment that i found out like one best moment in my life i think um i think uh the one best moment of my life was probably I would probably say, at least for my career, was the day that I found out that music would be my calling and I realized that that's exactly what it would be because um, that's, again, when I realized that I was able to reach out to and inspire so many more people through music than I would through, you know, paleontology and all the other things that I've ever considered about doing. And... Um, that that would be in career wise. Um, that was a few years ago, um, but I think actually, since you're saying like, what's the best moment of my life? Actually, 
in retrospect, I think everything, every day is the best day of my life because <laughs> every day I'm, is another day that I'm graced to be on this planet. And also every day is an opportunity to improve. And I would just say that if I can make progress, like, or even better, um, I think the, for me, every day is another opportunity to become better. So if I am is greater than I was yesterday, then I'm making progress. And for me, that is when I'm feeling at my best, when I know that I've progressed and I am progressing. Here, here. So Julie, I think we're almost to the bottom of the hour. Why don't you have the, the last question? Well, first of all, Sparse, this has been a lot of fun. See, it goes by really quickly. And I wanna thank everybody who is making comments and, and putting in the chat. Thank you so much. All right, so I have just a real simple question. What do you do to place yourself to be in a good mood? Whoa. Um, I think for me, um, putting myself in a good mood. I, I'll be honest, it can be a little hard, but I think the first thing is I, we have to, for me, it's like crushing my um, automatic negative thoughts, um, as Jim Quick calls them, ants, A-N-T-S. Um, which is really just fighting negativity back with twice the positivity, right? Darkness doesn't drive out darkness. Only love can do that. Um, I mean, sorry, light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And I, I would add, in fact, fear cannot drive out fear. Only faith can do that. And for me, I stay grounded in gratitude. And, and just the fact that, okay, I'm here. And I have another opportunity to make, I can make myself, you know, better. And it can literally be as simple as smiling when you're in tears because it takes a lot of courage for someone to cry and smile at the same time. And, but psychologically, it's literally been proven that when you do little things like that, it literally turns your mood upside down. And um, little things like that. And I think also staying in a state of flow. Um, when you work, and you feel like you're putting all into 110% of your effort into it. For me, that's also lately how I've been feeling my best. My mood sometimes is dependent on that, whether I do it or not. But, um, and I got to work on that. But um, I think getting in that state of flow really is a surefire way for me to lift my spirits when I'm feeling down. As well as, again, staying grounded in gratitude and crushing my automatic negative thoughts. That's right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, you can see why Sparsh Shah has been chosen as one of the world's greatest motivators. And I'm putting up here um, our website, worldsgreatestmotivators.com. And you can see all of the seasoned professionals uh, that we have featured on worldsgreatestmotivators.com. And at the bottom right, you can see Sparsh Shah is our selection as our youth motivator. Most of these motivational speakers have been uh, practicing their craft and um, loving what they do for 40, 50 years, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, much longer than Sparsh has even been breathing on this <laughs> planet. So we want to commend you, Sparsh, for being the youth motivator that you are and that it's such a pleasure and an honor for us to have an opportunity to choose you and and make make it so that you um, have an, a, a platform and as such we'd like to announce that your episode the Sparsh Shaw episode of world's great greatest motivators um, will be broadcast and aired on television very soon we will be letting everybody know exactly when and where they can watch your episode sparsh it's in production right now finishing touches it's being sponsored by um by uh craig shelley of beverly hills and he's very very happy to make this possible for you and we are just delighted so everyone stay tuned for the Sparsh Shaw episode of World's Greatest Motivators coming soon to a television near you. Awesome. I can't wait um, for the episode and I can't wait for you all to hear it. There will be a lot of gems in that episode, I promise you. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. Absolutely. Thank you so much.
Thank you, everyone. And now I know that we're at the bottom of the hour. Some of you may need to leave. Um, and thank you for being here. Hi, but as we promised, we have a special bonus right here, right now. Sparsh, yep. will you be willing to give everyone your special song for this evening to close us out? Yes, I definitely will. Um, this is my debut single. Um, I actually wrote this five years ago, but I just released it um, on my birthday this year, which was April 30, because that was one of my big goals. I wanted to have my first single out um, by by my birth by the time I turned 17. So it's called "There's Always Tomorrow," and uh, what, if you want to definitely um, look at this again, it's on YouTube, and pretty soon it'll be on Spotify and all the streaming platforms. But YouTube is the best place to go. But, um, before you begin, before you begin, could you um, tell everybody what's behind you here? Pure Rhythm. Oh yeah, Pure Rhythm. It's a uh, portmanteau. It's my actually my stage name as a rapper per se. So it's my it's a portmanteau of the words pure and rhythm. So uh, it's kind of like okay, I don't curse when I rap, not at all. Um, and I I I stray away from the um, regular, I guess you could say, materialistic topics that most people rap about, um, especially these days, but just because I'm pure doesn't mean I don't have rhythm, so, you know, I'm all about the rhythm, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still legit, and I, I'm still on fire on that, on that grind, so. Yes, you are. Excellent, excellent. All right. All right, so shall we have a drum roll, please? And uh, everyone, we'd love to present to you the amazing Sparsh Shaw. Thank you. Have you ever felt alone? Or oh, maybe not at home? Did you want to give up? Cause maybe it was too much Well you might not have wings But you can still fly and you can sing Because who you are Doesn't matter cause you're a superstar There's always tomorrow No need for the sorrow we will make it if we can Come back from where we began If you can believe it You can achieve it Life's a mountain With steep and bumpy edges And you have to push yourself All the way to the peak of the ledge is. Well, you might not have wings, but you can still fly and you can sing Because who you are doesn't matter cause you're a superstar There's always tomorrow, no need for the sorrow We will make it if we can Come back from where we began If you can believe it You can achieve it So don't ever believe that what you have will go in vain You can still follow your dreams no matter how much the pain There's always tomorrow No need for the sorrow We will make it if we can Come back from where we began If you can believe it You can achieve it Yeah <laughs> you see all those Beautiful. hearts? Oh, the hearts. Oh. Yay, oh. yay. God oh, bless. Thank you so much. Stephanie, oh. clapping. Everybody's clapping. Clapping. So oh. amazing. <laughs>
Beautiful, beautiful, so amazing. Clapping and hearts. Love that. Beautiful, Heart. Sparsh. Thank, Thank you, you so much. When is your Thank next? You. Uh, what's what's your next actual performance? Um, actually, the next one is in uh, two days from now. Um, I'm going to be doing well. Yeah, two days from now. So I'm going to be doing a another webinar, more of an interview uh, with some performances along the way. Um, uh, at this um, at San Bernardino University in California, they're hosting me, so um, it will be my absolute blessing to be there on Friday. And more stuff will come. Absolutely. I, yeah, I always tell people too, you know, uh, jokingly, but I do mean it. Um, if I don't know when my next performance is, then the response I give is, "Whenever God calls me, I'll go." <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's which that's will be a lot. Appropriate. That's very appropriate. Well, yeah, um, and then of course, world's greatest motivators, right? Absolutely, that that's right. coming up. That's coming up. Yes, and I want to thank you so much for for debuting your, this wonderful song, and I'm so grateful it's on YouTube, and we'll make sure that uh, we put that on again. And the name of it is? Uh, it's called "There's Always Tomorrow." Bar Shaw, "There's Always Tomorrow." Yep. Great. Well, thank, thank you, you so Sparsh. much. We will be sending a replay to everyone, and we'll make sure that um, we, we get all the information about your upcoming episode. And uh, anything else that you want to announce, we'll make sure that that gets in there. So just make sure that we have all that in information. So t for tonight, we want to say thank you for everyone who's been tuning in. Thank you for everyone who's watching on the replay. Um, we love you. We believe that this is a conversation with great motivators like Sparsh Shaw is worth our time. So the positive media makes a difference. Thanks for being here with everyone. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all for being here. Bye. Bye-bye.